Hi sewing friends, welcome to my sewing room. My name is Beth and if you're new, welcome. It's nice to be sewing with you today. Today I'm going to share a couple of ways to make a flying geese unit without using a ruler. And then at the end I will show how I made my geese with a ruler in my last video. Just in case you missed it, I'll show you an easy way to use a ruler. It's kind of fun. I don't have a lot of specialty rulers, but this is one that I did pick up a while back. I found it at a thrift store. It was in a set of rulers. It wasn't a complete set, but I did get this one. And it's always fun to look around at thrift stores for sewing items, quilting items. Uh, you might find something. And I just, when I see things, I pick them up and then it's in my stash. I don't often buy specialty rulers, but this has been a good one to have. So let's show a couple of ways that you can make the flying geese unit without a template. And this is the block I made in a recent video. If you want to go back and look at this beautiful block using a lot of flying geese uh, little pieces to make this beautiful quilt block. Let's get started. Today I'm making flying geese units that are three and a half inches by two inches before they're put together. That's the unfinished size. So I'm beginning with the size that I want. That blue fabric is three and a half by two inches. And then I cut two squares that are two inches and they will overlap a little bit on that top corner. I'll draw that pencil line and I'll sew right along the pencil line and open it up. This method you could use for any size flying geese. It's not preferred sometimes just because you have a little bit of waste behind that triangle right there. You cut off the excess behind and you can use those pieces for a half square triangle for another project. Then I'll take the other square and make sure that my pencil line is going the correct direction and I will sew right along the pencil line again. Here you can see that you can use those little leftover pieces for a tiny half square triangle. Another method for making flying geese without a specialty ruler is to use that same background piece, three and a half by two inches, and I cut a square, one square, two and a half inches, which is a little bit bigger than I need. On the back of my rectangle, I'm going to find the center by folding and I'm going to mark a quarter inch away from the edge right on that fold. Once I have my pencil lines drawn using that quarter inch dot, I will lay the triangle pieces along that line. I'll put right sides together and I'll sew along the pencil line. This uh, seam doesn't have to be exact, but you do want to sew right on the pencil line. And this little triangle I added will be a little bit too big, but I'll use that rectangle as my guide and I will trim around it using that blue rectangle and then I will cut off the excess. So this uh, uses creates just a little bit less waste than the last method that I showed you.
Now to show you how to make that flying geese unit using a ruler. And with these two squares, I'll be able to get four flying geese. My large square is six inches and the smaller square is four and a half. And I'm going to draw a pencil line through the middle. Then I'm going to sew on both sides of that pencil line. I cut right along my pencil line and I will have two sort of funny looking half square triangles and I'm going to put these right sides together with opposite fabrics facing and I will draw another pencil line through the center and then again I'm going to sew on both sides of the pencil line. going to trim now all of my flying geese units using this ruler. At this point, these little flying geese units are three and a half inches by two inches. The ruler says that it is a finished block one and a half by three inches. So you kind of have to be careful when you're thinking about quilt blocks, what size, if it's um, finished or unfinished. And when it says finished, it just means that's the size that it is when it's all sewn together in the quilt. So I'm going to keep making some more flying geese units and before you know it I'll have enough for another one of those beautiful dizzy geese quilt blocks. If you want to see that video how to make that dizzy geese block I'll list it in the description box below. It's always nice to sew with you. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next time.